this problem of blocks so if we see over here um, let's focus our attention on this chair it's on the layer um, chairs let's see if I want to change the color of this chair to something like um, green maybe I'll click OK and you see that nothing really happened <laughs> why why my chairs or all of my chairs didn't change to the green color well it is because this block or the line work inside this block was probably overridden so if we have to manually fix this we'll have to right click on it pick block editor get inside our block select our geometry go to the home tab on the ribbon and fix that to a layer zero so that way the layer that we assign to it will take effect with the colors and their properties so of course we also have to make sure that this is set by layer on the color and then we'll have to close we'll have to say save the changes to our chair and finally our chair will change to the color that we wish <laughs> you can see all of those steps you can imagine also if you work with drawings that you receive from clients consultants or so on you might have this problem very very often <laughs> Like for instance, here we have another block with the CPU. And again, if I change its color to yellow, you can see that again, nothing really happens. <laughs> so let's try to streamline that process uh, with a quick and easy command macro, right? Uh, at this point, you're probably used to our custom macro commands we have created so many on the channel and that is and again um one of the easiest way to streamline these um, tedious processes is by using a custom macro command so there are a couple of ways um to create this command one way is using the command macros palette which is not brand new it was released on autocad 2023 but um i understand some of you uh, might not have the latest version of autocad might be using autocad 2021 and for that reason i'm gonna use the tool palette so you have the tool palette so there's no excuse to waste your time right you have to i mean there is no excuse to not waste your time <laughs> so so i'm gonna draw a rectangle really quick to click and drag it to the tool palette so the reason why i do that is so i can right click and change its properties and over here I can name my command, maybe, I don't know, block, lazy block. I don't know, it's all up to you. <laughs> Let's see, lazy block, fix color. Again, that's all up to you. We can add a description here too. But the idea is that once we change the use flyout to no, we will have the option to change the command string over here now how are we going to be able to change its properties without going to the block editor and all of those prompts we can do it by utilizing a command uh, first of all i'm going to erase this uh, preline option i'm going to leave the cc just because that means cancel on your keyboard and that's very important to start with that uh, when we create macros mm, but over here i'm going to utilize a command called 
and copy. I use capital letters just for so you can see things better. Doesn't matter if it's capital or lowercase. And of course, press and enter. Now, if I click OK, if I use this command, you can see that we're just activating the end copy command. And if we don't know anything about the end copy, we can press F1. And AutoCAD will help us understand um, what this command does. It says copies objects that are contained in an XREF block or DGN underlay. And we are working with blocks. So we're trying to copy an item so that way we can change its properties, right? And we will be able to fix the overridden properties without having to get inside the block editor. So now if we follow the prompt uh, and select our block, you can see that I'm going to start selecting objects. And if I press enter, and AutoCAD is asking me again to specify a, no, a base point. So I had to press enter again. That means two times. And then finally it's asking me again to specify a displacement. That means three times enter. So I'm going to press the third time. And now you can see that I have copied these lines or line work from within inside the block. So now that we understand how this end copy works, I'm going to go back to my command and I'm going to try to complete the prompts here, right? Remember what happened when we use the end copy? Well, it has AutoCAD ask to select an object. And of course, uh, there is a character for um, stopping or selecting a, an object and is this character the slash or forward slash this is how we tell AutoCAD hey I want give me give me mm, a moment to select something and once we can use two times if we want to select two times but you saw that when we use the end copy command it only asked to select once. And you remember what happened after we selected an item in the block? Yes, AutoCAD asked us a couple of follow-up questions and we had to press enter to accept it. I think we're three times if I remember correctly. So I'm going to click OK to try the command again and again i like to do this because when we test our command in small steps we're gonna avoid um we're gonna avoid um, a lot of trouble uh, what happens if we keep adding and adding um, strings to our command and in the end we realize that it doesn't work that means i'll have to go through each piece of code and try to find where is the problem and that's a big headache that I don't like um, to have that's why I like to go in small steps um, anyway so let's click the command again and now it's, it's telling us to select our object if I select this block you can see that I'm outside the command already and if I press F2 to expand my command line and see what's going on, we can see that we ran the end copy. We selected one object was found. It created a copy of that object on these locations. And now if we move the block a little bit over here, it looks like nothing happened. Let's test it one more time. So I'm going to click on it. Select this. 
nope it looks like it's not copying uh, anything let's try to select um, maybe this line over here okay all right great so let's slip on another block um so let me erase first the lines that we have copied let's see over here so i'm gonna select that click this one and you can see what happened basically one of those lines um, within the block was copied as you can see all right now the whole idea is that once we have that line we can use that line to merge the layers so why we want to merge a layer well because remember when we went inside this block right in the block editor when blocks are overridden we can see that they are on a different layer other than zero and that's wrong so what we're trying to do is once we copy a line or an object from within the block we can use a command called lay merge to force it to be in layer zero and that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna go back to the properties over here and what i can do is i'm gonna use this underscore that tells autocad a command is coming but i want also with this uh, character that the command um, have to be activated from within the command line meaning without any prompts or dialog boxes that we will need to accept so i'm gonna say use the call command lay merge that's the command and of course when we use any command we always need an enter right a semicolon in this case that represents an enter in your keyboard now once we run this command autocad is gonna ask to select an object or a layer to merge let me test it really quick i'm gonna click okay so let's say um gonna click the command if i select something like this one autocad again is asking the lay merge command is asking to select an object and of course the object that i want to select is the same line that we just copy with the end copy command you see that now i don't want to click again i don't i want to avoid clicking again so in order to do that i can use the last option so if i say l for last and press enter you can see that i'm gonna select the last object that i copy which is the line and that's great and if i press enter a second time on my keyword autocad is now gonna ask me to select object on target layer meaning give me AutoCAD is asking, give me a layer that you want to merge this layer. And of course, we said we want the layer zero, right? Remember that the layer inside this block always needs to be on layer zero to avoid any of these overridden properties. So I'm going to press enter. I, um, I made a mistake because I was supposed to uh, give the layer zero and I and I present a mistake anyway let's do it again so let me erase this line and let's start again so I'm gonna click the command it's asking me to select my block of course I'm gonna select this AutoCAD is asking me now to select a layer to merge remember we don't want to select again we only want to click once and get this block fixed so i'm going to use the last option and with the l shortcut press enter and i'm going to press one more time so autocad can accept that selection and now autocad is asking me to select an object on a target layer 
or a name you can see that option so i can um, type n for name because remember when we create a macro we try to avoid any um, dialog box and any clicking instead of me clicking again i'm gonna type n for name so i'm gonna press enter and now our guy is asking for the layer name and we said it's going to be layer zero so i'm going to press enter and look what already happened the layer uh, color already changed <laughs> now we need to finish follow-up question from oroca that says do you wish to continue and of course i'm going to say i don't want to click here remember we want to say w sorry y for yes and press enter and now um, you can see that our block was fixed right because look what happened now when we change this um, cpu layer to from yellow to something like cyan and click OK. You can see that this block of written color was fixed, right? Which is great. Now, before we forget, uh, let's undo a couple of times and let's go back to our code and put those steps that we just did, right? So remember uh, when we use the lay merge command, uh, what happened? Well, AutoCAD. It's going to ask to select a layer and to avoid selecting we're going to use the last option press enter a couple of times remember to accept that last object then AutoCAD asked um, for the other layer to merge and we want a name for the layer so the n shortcut for name and with an enter of course to accept that name and what's the name well the name of the layer was zero and of course always enter to accept that name then remember that there was a final follow-up question from orca that says do you want to accept this so let's click ok now and let's test it and let's click on it let's say and we can select an item like this one and you can see that the block was quickly fixed. Now, there's still a small problem here. What will happen with the line work that was, um, with the line or object that was copied? It's still there. <laughs> and we don't want that, right? You can see if we move this block, there is a line right there. <laughs> and we don't want that. We don't want to create a geometry that doesn't go with our drawing, right? <laughs> Every time we fix a block. So that's a problem. And let's see how we can solve that. So I'm going to move my block here. Now, how do we handle that small problem of avoid um, objects uh, being created, right? So what I can do is I can go back to my small but powerful code that we are creating and learning together about macros. And what I can do is I can use the command. Every time we use this underscore, we are telling AutoCAD that a command is coming. And the command that I want to use is the command erase. Because we want to erase that um, line or that object it can be any object right a line an arc whatever we copy or select it so we want to erase it and of course uh, press and enter to accept that command erase and we don't want to select it and we can use the last option again with the l shortcut and remember that when we use the last option we need to accept that selection with two enters all right so let's see what happened now i'm gonna click okay 
and let's test our command. Now let's see if there is any line work. And nope. <laughs> awesome. This command macro was great, but this is the macro that improved my workflow forever.